Thank you for attending. And my name is Yunling. I'm from Taiwan. My advisor is Dr. Yan Fuko. Today, I'm going to present in identifying tomato pests and disease in the field through LiveBot and deep learning. Okay. Tomato is an important crop around worldwide. Uh, according to FAO statics, tomato production accounting for 10% of the vegetable and fruit yields. However, tomato production was losses due to the pests and disease. For example, due to the German study, we found that tomato powdery mildew infection, which is a tomato disease, caused about 20% loss in fruit yield. Therefore, uh, we need to prevent this, and the identification is the first step to prevent production loss. Conventionally, identification has relied on examination by experienced farmer or the microscopic examination by plant pathologists. However, as of 2022, the uh, tomato industry in Taiwan is facing labor shortage, and the manual examination is time consuming. Therefore, an automatically tool for identification is in demand. Okay. This study proposes a system for identifying tomato pests and disease in the field through live bot and deep learning. The system consists of the chatbot, which is an instant messenger application, and the chatbot controller and identification model. There are many studies so to identify tomato pests and disease. For example, they, are, they try to use convolutional neural network to classify nine tomato pests and disease. However, they use the image with, taken on the simple background, which is far from reality. When the model identifies the image taken on the real-world scenario, the misclassification may arise. And there are other research to using object detection model to locate and classify the disease. However, they classify the disease based on passengers, not by the symptoms of disease. The between-class similarity of disease of lesions may may confuse the model and thus cause misclassification. So in our study, we tried to use other way. We categorize the disease and classify based on the, based on the lesion appearance. And these are the common pests and disease in Taiwan. There are certain kinds of them. Okay. And we classify them by the lesion appearance. We can see that some of them share similar symptoms, like the upper right, they are all like the spots. And when we classify by their lesion appearance, we ensure that each category can be treated using the certain broad spectrum pesticides. And this is the corresponding pesticides. And let's see the identification model. We collect about 9,000 images from field and greenhouse, and we verify the disease by microscopic examination by pathologists. And 80% of the image we're using for training, 20% for testing. The image will then label, manual label, as the ground truth for training the object detection model. And we apply data augmentation to the model and it comprises a photometric distortion, geometric distortion, mosaic, mix-up, and copy-paste. The object detection model of architecture, YOLO V5, was trained to localize and categorize the disease on leaves. And we apply hyperparameter evolution to, find the, to automatically find the optimal hyperparameter for the YOLO V5. It's an optimization using a genetic algorithm. The process trained for 30 epochs each generation and trained 100 times. And this is a result. The mentioned training strategy we're using for training the YOLO V5 and trained for 30 epochs. And we can see the performance of a model reach is 
highest mean average precision of 88.8%, and the and the F1 score which is 85.3%. See the identification example. The left is the original image, and the middle one is the label image by us. And the right is the prediction by the model. As we can see, when the model identifies the, the image with complex background, it can still successfully identify. OK. And when the model identifies the images of Tovento leaves in fact with multiple paths and disease, it still can successfully identify all of, all of the different paths and disease on the same leaf. We can we evaluate the model performance by confusion metrics. First, we can see that the model on identify the ca category of specs perform not well. It sometimes confuses the ring and spot as the specs. The reason for that is some some of the images, the disease of early blight and toxic spots and bacterial spots is a different stage of the specs and ring and spots. And some of the disease between the early and late stages are more difficult for to define and causing misclassification. Second, we can see that the four positive occur more often in specs category. The reannotation we label the lesions on the same leaf with a single with a single bounding box. However, the model tends to predict the lesions individually, and this causing the false positive. Last, we can see about 10% of the images identified by the model was were full negative results. The model tends to identify the disease in the middle of the images, which causing the around which ignore the disease and lesions around the image and cause the false negative. After seeing the identification model, we see we can see starting the chatbot. The chatbot was an uh, instant message application and it co connect with the chatbot controller. Chatbot controller, controller is used to control the data flow between the identification model and to communicate with the instant messenger application. We can efficiently gather information on the identified result and the corresponding diagnosis. And let's see the our results of the chatbot. After <clears throat> okay, user can easily upload their passing disease leaf images and get the identif identification results in few seconds and the Interface is easy to use and designed for the Taiwan farmers. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay, to sum up, also the model has some flaws. It doesn't affect the usage of it. And this study proposed a system for using CM model, a chatbot, and a chatbot controller to identify tomato pests and disease in the field. And the proposed system can provide uh, identification results and a corresponding diagnosis to the farmers. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Starling. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, I have two, two questions. Like, one thing, like, uh, what's the distance? Uh, of capturing image from the plant as I have seen like in one uh, image there is only one leaf oh uh, yes and we, uh, okay go ahead oh we we have a tutorial for user if they add if they use the chatbot you no know, like for capturing images like how much distance you have like uh, we 
distance when they taking they just about 30 centimeters. So the 640 by 640 image, one leaf in one 640 by 640 image. Uh, resolutions? Yeah, like it's, I mean like in 640 by 640, you use 640 by 640 resolution, right? Yes, yes, yes. And in, in that one image, like it's quite a like big size for one, one leaf only. Uh, yes, uh, take an image will be resized with that into 640 by 640 pixel. So uh, the, tr the user can upload their image like this, and the leaf image was about two thirds of the image. What about if we take a little far or we go near? So what what your uh, algorithm will like give output? You mean if we take an image too far from the yeah. leaves? Yeah, if they have like four or five leaves in any image, so will it work or no? Oh, it may cause the, um, it may cause, maybe it may cause misclassification or it cause false negative because the lesions on the leaf is too small for the model detect. And you said like uh, you are planning to in future like uh, farmers will use it. Farmers will use it in the future, right? Using this? Yeah, your application. Uh, now it's just uh, testing. We. No, I mean, I mean, like if if in future they want to use it, like how practical this is. I mean, like in there in the field, there are huge amount of uh, plants, and they will go and scan every leaf. So how practical this is? What do you think about that? Oh, I think they can. In our opinion, we think we think that they can capture the image, they the, capture the disease that they don't know what it is. Just And usually the disease in the same field are the same same categories. And uh, do you face any class imbalance? Like you cal cal collected almost like 9,000 images. So you did some class balance in that. Like there are, I think, nine classes? Uh, about 10, 10, 10, 10 classes. classes. So how you... Balance the classes for 9,000 images. You face the class imbalance in uh, while training algorithm? Mm, I, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't do some unbalancing. I didn't do things to uh, unbalance images. And the result, the image, the disease with less images perform actually really not, not bad and good enough for us, and we don't need to collect more images of them. Actually, the most images we this is the difficult one has the most images. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wang. It's thank time. You. Okay, thank you.